Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam. I've come to a friend of mine's nursery that is uh, not too far um, southeast of Raleigh, North Carolina. It's called C&J Nursery. This is actually a growing nursery, but they are open to the public. So they, they, they allow customers to uh, come here. So I thought I'd show you this version you know, of, how, of how to purchase plants. There's probably a nursery somewhere near you uh, that's a growing nursery. Most of them only want wholesale uh, traffic. They're just not set up. Uh, to sell any retail but this is a place that will actually accept some retail traffic so i thought i'd bring you here uh, a lot of things have been brought uh, inside i'm inside a uh, what what is a shade house during the spring and summer but then they put the um, white plastic on it white polyfilm on it in the winter time and they pack as many plants as they can in here there's probably and there's probably i don't know how many shade houses he has um, but pro probably 20 uh, something like that and uh, like i say they have the white poly on them now I talked about in some winter planting videos about bringing things that were on the inside like this to the outside uh, and, and planting them. It's going to be quite a bit of a shock. And so, uh, you know, these things that have been packed on the inside here, if they're showing any signs of uh, having not gone to sleep yet, um, I'll be super careful with them. Or I'll take them back to the house and maybe just decide to protect them uh, for the rest of the winter and then plant them in the spring. But uh, uh, there's some windmill palms here that are quite beautiful. And this is something I haven't talked about yet in these uh, shade plant uh, videos, but uh, uh, here in zone seven where I'm at, windmill palms work great. Uh, in the shade, I actually put a, a photo up on uh, uh, Instagram last, uh, last week with a windmill palm up under a Japanese holly, uh, quite happy. But I'm gonna walk around with the camera into these houses and show you a few shade things that, uh, and I'm gonna grab a few things here while I'm, while I'm here today. So this is the next house over, and you can see he's got some really nice uh, sunshine ligustrum uh, on their way to being ready for the spring. And uh, more of those windmill palms uh, back here, and uh, more of these uh, Climbs Hardy uh, gardenias. Climbs Hardy gets maybe three to four feet in uh, height and width, but again, uh, work, works well in the part shade. In the next house over here, he's got a beautiful crop of uh, Fatsia japonica that will be ready. Uh, in the spring, they're not rooted in. This is a plant that I would definitely not winter plant in uh, zone seven where I'm at. They're barely hardy here as it is. So putting this thing outside in December would be a mistake. This is a plant that I'll definitely come back and pick from these and spring plant one uh, at that time. There's some really nice uh, uh, Mahonia right here along, the, along that wall over there. And there's uh, they're all budded up to flower. Uh, right there, there's some, there's some Variegated pittosporum right here would also take some part shade. This is the full size variegated pittosporum. It'll get quite big. Then there's a, a green, uh, green one right here. It's definitely a good uh, part shade plant. And uh, another crop of them back in the back. I may get one of these dwarf pittosporum today. The next house over is full of these beautiful seven gallon wax myrtles. And uh, wax, myrtles, wax myrtles are native to the Southeast and uh, it's a good, very good screening plant. And of course, they'll grow in quite a bit of shade. They'll be a little thin uh, in the shade. So uh, there's some variegated privet in here as well. Privet will grow in the shade, but this variegated privet will lose a lot of its variegation in any deep shade. But these are beautiful wax myrtles. And if you had a shady spot to screen, uh, that is a good choice. Sometimes they'll thin out toward the base in a shady spot and you'll need to underplant it with a uh, with some other low growing uh, woody shade loving plant like an azalea or something like that. The next house over, he's got some three gallon windmill palms in here. I think I'm gonna get one of these. And then some beautiful Globosa nana cryptomeria in seven gallon pots. This is a, this is a, uh, a conifer that will take sun or shade. I find that it just doesn't matter with this, with this plant. Not deep shade, but uh, part shade is absolutely fine or you know absolutely sitting out in full sun, no problem. Another shade option is these uh, dwarf yopon hollies. These uh, yopon hollies are native uh, to the Eastern United States. And this is a, a dwarf version. And they're super, super shade tolerant. If you look at my uh, two minute dwarf yopon video, mine were just in really, really dark place under some oaks. This house right here has some beautiful uh, distillium in it. And uh, you can see where the uh, flowers are trying to open along these stems right here. This red flowers along those stems. Distillium works great in sun or part shade. Deep shade, not so much, because it will stretch uh, quite a bit, but uh, fantastic evergreen ornamental shrubs. I've got a few distillium videos coming up 
on the channel that I shot in Alabama while I was down there, but he's got a really nice crop. I don't know what variety this is. I found a whole house, or almost a whole house, of uh, Mondo grass. Mondo grass is a great uh, evergreen ground cover uh, in a shady space. I will use some dwarf Mondo at some point in the paths that I'm using in the shadier parts of the backyard. Um, I don't need any right now, but this is quite a few, uh, quite a few Mondo grass in here. I found a nice group of gold dust Akuba that hadn't been uh, packed together yet. They're not ready to be uh, covered at this point. At some point they'll come in here and cover these before the end of December because early January normally uh, in my area any of these evergreen plants like this uh, have to be uh, covered up. But you can see the uh, spotting on the leaves on these evergreen Akuba japonica gold dust. Most of the time when I come to a nursery like this and I'm looking to buy something, everybody would be looking for the most uniform gold dust Akuba they could find with that you know, perfect variegation and everything. But right next to it, right here, for whatever reason, here is a uh, one that's almost entirely green with just a few spots in it. And it's clearly different uh, than every other one here. And so uh, I'm gonna nab that bad boy and take it with me because I think it's a, uh, a completely different uh, variety. It's a probably was a sport, a cutting. They took off one. Didn't realize it was uh, going to turn out slightly different, but I'm going to grab that bad boy. Found a nice crop of uh, Camellia sasanquas here that are in bloom and a uh, really nice crop of David viburnum. This is one of my absolute favorite viburnums. Probably needs a little more sun in the area that I'm planting these plants in today. This is a nice house back there in the back corner, and I'll go around to the other side of this house. There's some Elysium back there, and I may grab one of those Elysium. They have this house packed so tight I can't get to the other side. I'll have to go around to the other side, but these are beautiful Shindo Viburnums. And uh, this, this plant will grow in the sun or the shade. It really doesn't matter. Probably a little looser form uh, in the shade would need a little bit of pruning, but if you're trying to screen something in a park shade spot, uh, the Shindo Viburnum would work really well for that. Uh, there's some nice Pieris here, and there's another crop on the other end of this uh, building that uh or this house that i'm going to go uh, take a look at in a minute but i'm definitely going to take one of these pieris home and they're budded up to bloom there's some august beauty gardenias right there and august beauty will definitely take sun or part shade without any problem if you want a uh, gardenia in your shady space so this is the other end of that house and there's some more windmill palms in here a lot of these houses have rooted cuttings in them where they've rooted things uh this year these are dwarf burford hollies and uh turning around over there on that wall right down there on the ground. It's a bunch of crepe myrtles uh, they have rooted. Of course, here's some uh, big leaf hydrangeas. I don't know what variety this is, but uh, these are definitely good um, in the uh, in shade or part shade. Uh, this uh, um, They're going to sleep right now because it's December. In fact, they should have already been asleep, really. And then there's some uh, more Pieris here that are uh, budded up and ready to bloom. I hit another mother load of Mondo grass. This is dwarf Mondo. The Mondo grass I showed you before was just a regular Mondo grass. And then this is all black Mondo here. This stuff is so slow growing in a nursery setting. This, these, things, these things will really frustrate you. They just take a long, long time. Uh, it's a great plant and it's a, a, a very tame shade uh, ground cover. This beautiful black foliage year round. But in a nursery setting, these things can really take a long time to fill a fill a container out you know these uh, uh dwarf mondo here are pretty quick about it about filling the container out and getting them sold and and out of the nursery but these black mondo definitely take longer i think i'm going to grab a couple of these so i have an upcoming shade planting video at my house and you can see the things that i got from uh, this nursery uh, as part of that i have several other videos attached to this as well where i'm getting in mail order plants and all kinds of things leading up to this shade planting project if you want to follow uh, any of the uh, videos from the uh, new house the playlist is uh, right here thank you very much and uh, don't forget to subscribe to my channel